and this term of I mean, I, I, I mean, when you actually look at it, I'm sure when you look at your bar, yeah. and you look at what you've done, you sort of go, my God, I've actually done, yeah, because it probably doesn't seem as much, mm. or not. Well, at and times, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been getting um, more of what I do translates into um, stuff that actually gets recorded yes. and is documented in a, in a way that other people can access. Yeah. Um, whereas before, a lot of the work that I did um, didn't get recorded, um, only on paper. And uh, a few musicians knew the work that I was doing. Yeah. So, so it wasn't preserved in any format that, that you could actually take away, like a yeah. CD or... Yeah. Um, yeah, well, particularly a CD um, format. Yes. Yeah. So, so certainly the work that reaches final stage of, of being recorded and being put out in the marketplace, yeah. for sure it has been yeah. becoming more and more. Yeah, and you're almost becoming a, a personality, you know, a commercial thing. That everybody now knows your work because it's available you know, in this sort of format. Yeah, but, more and more. but also the I've worked as a sideman on, on yeah, a lot of different projects. So, um, even in those terms, yeah. yeah. Um, particularly with uh, uh, Tony Cox yeah. and with Tananas, yeah. you know, and with Ray Piri. <coughs> Before that, with Wild to the Floor. Although that album didn't get much of a strange then, no? so that's to be one of the critical albums of you know, the last millennium. Serious? Ah, no, certainly. I mean, what you were doing was certainly, in my mind, ahead of its way. I think it went over the head of a lot of people. What, the wire to the floor uh, stuff? Well, that was really the place where I got to work with um, Kevin Gibson a lot. Oh for the first time, yeah. and I mean, I don't mean to talk about him at the expense of uh, James Schofield or Gavin Minter, Adrian Levi, uh, who is the agent of Adrian's court, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um, but it, it was an exceptional period of time. Yeah. Um, you know, rehearsing every day and, and working with him every day for about six months. Yeah. It was just awesome. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's, it's very personal as well. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, I mean, a lot, of, um, a lot of what I've been able to do in, in terms of um, recordings and, and making recordings has been to work with people who are very, very close to me. And, and that's really what it's about. It's a big, big circle, and the circle gets bigger and bigger. It, it is, but it's actually quite um, small and precious as yeah, well. Yeah, it's intimate, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think that's really reflected in, in, you know, in the work as well, is that you, the people that you work with have to, well, I mean, they're a part of the whole process. There's a link, you know, not just an obvious link, but there's a, a bigger relationship. For sure, yeah. Which it comes through in the music. Oh, well, that's good, yeah. That's yeah. that's good. Because I have a really... I mean, I have... Um, when I think about approaching working in the studio uh, 10 years ago to how I feel about going in now, yeah. it's with a lot more um, anticipation and yeah. far less dread. Really? Oh, yeah. Really for sure, because I thought it's intimidated by the the fact that it's going to be there to last, uh, and uh, instead of being excited about that, uh, that it's um, uh, you know what I mean, being daunted by yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Um, being working with guys who were who were more experienced in that environment, sure. working with guys like Ian yeah. and Pete Sclair, yeah. Kevin Gibson, yeah. you know. Ray Piri and yeah. various others. It, it, it was just um, mind blowing to see how skilled a lot of these people wow. are and were. Yeah. 
and you know but also it was valuable because you learn I learned that far from being scared they they were totally enthusiastic about it wow. totally yeah. and curious to yeah. see what was going to yeah. happen yeah. and um, by now that is yeah. my take on it um, so the process is easier for you to find it's things. more it's more easy yeah I look forward to it yeah. far more yes. um, because I know it's a, a place where very special things can happen sure. yeah Do you feel that that happened yeah. yes very definitely more so than does it, does it say with each album do you find that you finding out more about yourself yeah and yeah able to you know go in and go oh, okay there's something new here there's something new there yeah well I mean the, the main thing like with, with trains uh, it was a bunch of guys who went in and we basically played together yeah it's and uh, I mean a lot of the songs do have a specific structure but a lot of them didn't um I mean, meeting of the women is a lot like quite a writing. Yes. In that sense. Yes. There was an, like a four bar phrase or an eight bar phrase, and the whole band just goes yeah. to town, yeah. basically. Yeah. Play off and with each other. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, quite a right reflects that aspect, whereas a song like um, Slow Samba was quite specific. Um, Tempo di Puto was quite specific. Umklangano was a, a group improvisation, you know, that that basically just happened to be. That's actually how it happened. It wasn't premeditated in any way. That's why there are four writers, because those are four people that joined in with me, uh, and that's what came out. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. No. How did we just do that? No, exactly. Yeah. Um, that was a very special moment. But uh, for Playola, a lot of the music was written out, and um, there were far more controlled um, spaces for improvisation. Okay. Yeah. That was going in. That was the idea that you had the basic elements, but yeah. But a lot of follow. But a lot of structure. I mean, uh, Adrian's chord is all written out. Um, Margaret Matheson, uh, Playola as well, Olaf Psalms, Barcarol, everybody was following charts. A brand new Wills, 12, 12, 88. They're all very structured. Now, to say, I mean, I'm in a disadvantage, but it's not good. That's what I have with the album. But just looking at the albums and stuff, it's time to dot. There's a story here. This is a story of the time. Whose story is it? Well, I guess it's mine. Yours. Yeah. Because I mean, from the artwork to, I mean, you know, who you are, um, um, what we must call it, oh, to various people. You're writing for specific people, and obviously saying saying specific things through the music. For sure. But now, it's, is it a specific period of time, or is it, you know, I mean, say if you have to look at the theme and say, okay, well, you know, what's, what is the underlying theme? I don't really know. I mean, I think that may come, become clear to me uh, over time. Okay. Um, I do know that. I don't know what made me choose to work on these 12 tunes yeah. and put them together yeah. in this collection. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, because a year ago I had fewer tunes. Yeah. Um, a year and a half ago I had even fewer. Um, is, is there a other than your life? I mean, well, the, <coughs> I don't know what makes me, for instance, choose. Um, particular songs yeah. and, and, you, you and decide to work on them. Yes. I mean, these, these obviously you work each of your life. Yeah. And now you've got quite a few of them here. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean... It's sort of quite humble. Sort of almost like, not a thank you, but, uh, you know, almost like respect. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, Amy is named after my niece because I happen to be in the studio 
with uh, the Sheer All Stars during September last year. And on that specific day, the 8th of September, I wrote a song, yes, which I then called Amy because that's her birthday. So the personal link was almost inadvertent. But I mean, I didn't set out to write a song called Amy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, but uh, Margaret Matheson <coughs> obviously is quite specific. Um, she's a movie producer, and I was uh, busy making music for a movie, but I eventually didn't um, get to to do the the job. Yeah, I was very disappointed. But anyway, during the time I was working on something else, which I thought may work within the movie um, because it's definitely a woman uh, a song that makes me think of, of a woman it's uh, a very gentle very, very lilting kind of song and um, I thought of the young woman who was the lead female role in, in this movie that I was writing for but then um, it became attached to Margaret Matheson's name, so I decided to call it Margaret Matheson. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but then Olaf Psalms has to do with the woman uh, Stephanie, um, who has been very dear to my heart for the last year and a half. And Olaf is a woman that she knew. And for instance, at the end of Olaf Psalms, there's a cough that's actually recorded there. Um, and Stephanie asked me to please preserve that cough. Well, it was Marcus Wyatt, actually. Really? Coughing at the end of his take. So, <laughs> she said, please preserve that because Olaf died of TB. So I said, cool, I'll do that. Then Stephanie heard the song and she said to me, have you ever seen a Gemsbok run? And I said, no. I said, because the whole bass line sounds like a Gemsbok running. And the Gemsbok was Olaf's totemic animal. So, I mean, there are all kinds of resonances that get pulled yeah, into a piece. Nothing specific, but all, all over the place. I mean, yeah. It's actually quite interesting because what, you, what you're actually doing is you're taking take different people's stories yeah and what you're getting from one person they've got from somewhere and someone else yeah you know, so there's there's a lot happening you know? for sure yeah. so i mean there's a book here <laughs> <laughs> well in that one song which i wrote um in one day on the 21st of february this year it's the most recent song yeah. on the album yeah um and i wrote it at a time when i was <coughs> Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. No problem. Hey. What's your day? Uh, just dig it. Okay. You alright? Hey. I'm getting a little bit sick. Shame. My fault, I made this. Hey. Sorry. Sorry. No, so, so as I was saying, this um, song was written. Three days after a girl that I was involved with for it's the longest relationship I've ever had. And she got married, and I was, <coughs> be, you know, in amongst two other relationships, which were also. Um, very close to me, but it's, it's like, exactly, so in all this confusion and handling the, the 18th of February, which is when, uh, you know, she got married, um, you know, I wrote this song about 
is definitely being held in Olaf's arms. So, because uh, the Holy Son woman, Olaf, and just that image of being held in this yeah. old woman's arms, yeah. I thought of calling the album Psalms. But then I thought, okay, Olaf Psalms. Yeah. And that's why that title. But I wrote that music from the bass line up uh, through the, the to the horns. Yeah. So that song was written in a day. And that's very weird because yeah. then there's also 12, 12, 88, which is the date on which I started working on that too. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> And you that, seem to work in extremes. I mean, you, yeah. you seem to do your best work when you almost... Because, I mean, as much as your subject matter touches on extreme situations, it's okay, so that seems to be the drive of it. I think so. The more extreme it is, the quicker the result. I or think so. even in some case, the better the result. Yeah, I think so. Because... Well, I think I need um, emotional drama in my life yeah. to, to work. Yeah. And sometimes I create it in order, to, in order to produce stuff, which sounds totally manipulative if yeah, it were so conscious. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, if it were conscious. Yes. But I think I think I'm able to identify it as a as a pattern, yeah. which I by no means would intend. No. You know. No. But it can be damaging to you. Totally. You know, I mean, it's exhausting to you. Yeah, I'm sure I'm destroying your own life and then, you know, the process of trying to achieve, you know, the ultimate goal. Because it's great that you listen to a piece of it. How do they get it? You get a piece of it. Well, I don't know. I'm, I listened to my album a couple of times and a lot of people, and I don't mean thousands, I mean like tens of people, yeah. have told me that... <laughs> They, but they, they think the the album is very light. In yeah, other words, yeah, quite a happy album. Yeah, well, the subject matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which is, I don't know. I mean, it's it's nice to to be able to work with with music that has a powerful impact, sure. and also a gentle impact oh. or a sad impact. Yeah. They ecstatic impact but I tend to go for things that that are pleasant yeah. and easy to hear yeah. and that is not something that I um, specifically aim for sure. I think it's a result of other things that I aim for um, I mean some woman was telling me that she cried at the launch of the album during the first song which was in fact Olaf's arms. And I suppose that's fitting too. But uh, I mean, people who've told me about listening to the album since it's out, you know, they say it's a very light yeah. album. Not a heavy dark. Yeah. They don't see it as big dark. Yeah, which, which is, which which is, is good. So yes. I suppose. Yeah, yes, yeah. Because, um, you know, even if some of it is, um, I mean, writing for me is a very solitary pursuit. Yes. As well, it's a, it's a very personal one yeah. as well. So it's, and I've always had my own room growing up, you know, and I've always had space yes. to to do whatever, like sit quietly for an hour. All of us yes. in in my family had grew up, grew up knowing that they at at yeah. So I mean, I still enjoy that, yes. and certainly for writing, I I like the notion that I'm alone. And I do all my homework at home, yeah. all the scratching out, <coughs> get the parts together. But then what's magical is going to the studio and the way people lift the dots off the page and, and, and give them back yes. to you. I and mean, those personalities come through. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's really awesome. And it's their interpretation, which For is sure. interesting because the way you, you know, where you perceived it, mm -hmm. the way you created it, you could give it across to someone and they could see it as you say completely differently. Sure. They could either elevate or it could be darker. Or, yeah. And it's interesting as to say because the the uh, what's the word? Uh, 
kind of thing in the word, but they're your, the source of your, of your right. Yeah. The place that you go to, to say no harm. And a lot of them are very intricate, very involved, very personal stories. But maybe because it comes across as being light, perhaps there's less in that. Because sure. Maybe everything isn't as dark and as bad. Yeah. And there's a lighter side to that as well. You know? For sure. Well, I mean, it's almost uh, like a sort of a letting go of chains. You know, so exactly. Oh, uh, what's the word? Um, when you do with your demons, you exorcise them. Exactly. But I mean, Amy came out of a happy yes. kind of place. Yes. A brand new world yes. was written after two years of writing almost nothing. It's and I was on on the phone to Angela. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, we were talking about something, you know, how you baby, blah, blah, blah. And I was doodling with my one hand on the piano and I came up with the beginnings of a brand new waltz. So <coughs> that's a very special song because it came out of a period of, yeah. of actually not having written much music. And it had never happened to me before. Like that? Yeah. No, no. Ever? Where there'd been a hiatus of... Yeah, you tried and you couldn't. Yeah. yeah, and that kind of broke yeah, that spell. pattern, the spell, yeah. And I don't know how it happened or why it happened. It's interesting because a lot of artists who, you know, who tackle very personal issues, I mean, I think everybody can only source the inspiration from themselves. But a lot of albums that are great, like that, land up sounding quite trying. Mm -hmm. Um, and quite obvious. Yeah. Whereas you, because you, you know, like what you, you were saying, that you didn't, there was no real intent with the song. You weren't trying to achieve a certain goal. Yeah. That you got them to probably a whole new place. Um, and you say a happy place. Uh, mm -hmm. Or a, a lighter place. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't, as much as, as you say, there's that structure mm -hmm. musically. Struck, you know, the songs were struck that they were written that uh, they were struck to us with an ultimate interpretation which I think is like any piece of art is that it's still something that is open to further interpretation by the listener it's For not sure. hard and fast not saying this is the beginning this is the story this is what happened and that's the end yeah. it's that obvious For sure. there's a lot of self investigation and personal mm -hmm. you know uh, people pick up different elements and it, and it them, you know, emotionally or, you know. For sure, and I mean, that's that's the the preciousness of, of it. I mean, it's um, <coughs> so so. I mean, a, a lot of the titles that landed up belonging to the music, um, also chosen quite specifically. But the music always comes first, yes. you know. Yes. Besides what it's named, yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, the, the music lives beyond the way I heard it, yeah. and the way the people who played with me played it. You know, it belongs in yeah. other people's uh, ears, and yes. and what they do with it is entirely yeah. up to them. The fact that it's that accessible mm -hmm. to people that they can, um, it's almost to say it's not. A lot of albums are very, as I say, are very hard and fast. Aren't they? The aim is quite open and or, or quite obvious, whereas the aim of this is what you make. Yeah, I mean, I my aim is is to make songs that seem complete to me, yes. and then that they are musically um, they make sense, yes. that they are interesting to play, that I might think of specific people to play. Them. And um, some are set up like to to be to be interpreted freely as well. So, I mean, there is a lot of specific uh, planning. Sure. But you know. Well, that's, uh, that's yeah. That's, that's like almost as if you you that's the foundation. For sure. And um, that's. Those are things that people don't necessarily need to see. No, I mean the fact that certain 
um, passages or yeah, certain things were, were physically hard to play yes. um, or mentally difficult to get around and understand for some of the players. I mean, it's got very little to do with the final yes. result. Yes. Yes. Also, yeah. Yes. I just have to ask you one thing. Yes, please. How did David get the foot of the... Because he's a fat guy. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole list of mafutas, you see. But then how did he do his part? Well, he was physically there. Was he there? Yeah. So he did all the percussion. Yeah. And you can hear Ian and Kevin. Yes. Both playing drum kits on so, one song, 12, 12, 88. Yeah, so I'm proud to have gotten those yeah, two together. So, you know. Because yeah, I was telling uh, Jane Main this morning that uh, Ian asked me about six years ago whether I knew of anyone uh, that I could, you know, that he but I could think of anyone who could work with him and that they would both have trap drums yes. and percussion yes. and that they could swap and yes. play. I yes. said there's only one person that I can think of and that's Kevin Gibson, yeah. but he doesn't play percussion. Yeah. That could do that with you <coughs> and that still remains true. Um, unfortunately, they weren't, they weren't both present at yeah. the same time. Same time. Ian recorded his track as an overdub. Yeah. But uh, it was something that that I had in my mind. Yeah. This song needs two drum kits. See, but, but you see what you learn up is that you challenge of musicians. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I think, is interesting because a lot of, that's not, that isn't your role, typically. All you want is to have a player play your songs, but you, you don't just give them songs, no. you challenge them. I, I love it. Because you know what they are, what they're about, yeah. what their possibilities are, and it's a case of saying, okay, I'm going to actually test you then. Well, I probably hate you for it when they when, when <laughs> start, but then afterwards they go, oh, two things, you know. No, I mean, it, <laughs> in, the intent is to, no. is to present ideas, mm. and I present ideas to some of the most courageous people I know, yeah. who are these crazy... Well, you hear things that maybe they don't hear, and you're saying, well... <coughs> Let's take it to another level. I, oh, I, in my mind, I see you doing this, or I see yeah. you doing that. And they're going, okay. Well, I mean, on Olaf Psalms, for instance, there was an inadvertent challenge. Yes. Because I, I thought, let me keep the song in the key of E because of Mark Duby, bass player. It turns out it was the worst key for you. Really? And it's an almost ridiculous key for brass players yes. who like flat keys, yes. you know. Yes. F, yes. B flat, yes. you know, E flat. Those are liquor keys for brass yeah, players. And you stay on that key. Do you do it? Well, all of, I mean, I wrote out everything in the key of E. Yeah. And I thought I was making it easy for oh. the bass player. And the brass players would just have to, have to live with it. As it turns out, it was incredibly difficult in the key of E for the bass player. So, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the purpose for which I <coughs> yeah, I wrote it. It was was actually yeah. totally inaccurate, yeah. and I learned something uh, quite yeah. valuable too. Yeah. You know what I mean? The string players were awesome. Yeah. The Korean player, player uh, Peter yeah. Jasper, was awesome. You know, they taught me things about their instruments, yeah. and obviously I learned a lot from from Ian all the time yes. because he's he's just an incredibly powerful. Um, person yeah and he's got a tremendous amount of love and yes. curiosity and he's a he's a someone that i feel very very privileged to to work both ways to know I work both ways. <laughs> thank you it's a pleasure that was great now it's very easy to talk to you yes yeah i think that's how i tend to do my interviews i either scare people because i go all over my questions uh, and I've always maintained I've done a lot of 
I can draft up 20 questions and I can ask you 20 questions. It yeah. It's very one dimensional. Yes. And it's not for me to leave an interview. I want to go where you want to take the interview. Oh, okay. That's where I want to tell my best interviews in the day. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah, I can draft up 20 questions. That's a pleasure.